This video is sponsored by Espresso Displays. Yes, I've done several tests on the Mac Mini now and I'm still finding ways to push it to maybe one day replace my MacBook Pro. But something we haven't really talked about yet, I only kind of teased it in my previous videos, is how great the Mac Mini is for working on the go. Now, I have to ask your permission really here to be a little bit silly, extra silly, you can say, because some of the scenarios I'm gonna show you today are gonna be a little bit extreme, but that's the point. I do hope this video, if nothing else, at least sparks some ideas in your head, because once you think outside this box, things could get interesting. And it may also answer some questions as well, like this one here from my Rania, I hope I pronounced it right, about the choice between the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, and the MacBook Pro. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. Oh, and don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the LLM specific Mac mini video. I'm still working on that, believe it or not. It's, it's a bit of a mission, but I am persevering with it. It's still in the works and it's coming next. So stay tuned for that one. Starting with this pretty remote example here, typically when you go away, you probably don't want to be working anyway. But for some people, work is kind of part of the fun too. Some people are like workaholics. Some people just like to work or make work part of their lives, right? Not to mention the growing number of digital nomads out there. I think this is a fantastic example for someone who wants to be as productive as possible, regardless of where they are, regardless of connectivity. I have everything I need in this pretty compact setup here. Realistically though, how efficient, right? Can you be on a Mac mini out here in the woods? Let's have a look. While we're here, let's talk about the setup itself. What do you actually need to make okay. this all work? What do we need? We need a mouse, we need a, a keyboard, not a real mouse, it's okay. <laughs> it's a different day now, by the way, the other day was a little bit too wet. Now I got five minutes of sunshine, so I thought I'd record it again. And as you can see, I mean, I can totally work here. I even went a little bit extra silly here by running LLMs in the wild, uh, editing a video. And I could work offline too, which would limit a few things, but using my phone, uh, which at the moment I'm using the iPhone as a hotspot. I mean, this would be a little bit too extreme as well, but I could run a web conference like Zoom or Teams meeting and it works well, right? I mean, it's crazy, but attaching a, a compact, tiny little 4K camera like this one from Obspot makes, makes it a perfect solution for, you know, it could get you out of jail, right? A quick conference call that is not on your phone and you can do some work at the same time on a touch screen using a Mac, that's that's pretty awesome. You get great audio, 4K quality. I mean, th this camera is actually, I, I did a review on it as well. You could go even more extreme by using something like Starlink, but you go like literally off grid, but this is great. I mean, this would give you a, a powerful setup in the middle of, I mean, I could be in the middle of the desert here, right? It's, um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. You can do some gaming if you want, try it. Call of Duty? No. There's no way we can game on the Mac, right? Well, game Not on the Mac. You can play Counter-Strike on it. Okay, in the end we just played Civilization VI, but <laughs> still amazing though that you can do that in the wild. Let's go back to the studio now, I'm getting cold here. <laughs> of course you're gonna need a power source. I nearly went a bit extreme here with this one to, to go like, you know, off-grid completely, which you can do. It was just gonna make it more dramatic for YouTube, which is great. You never know when the next zombie apocalypse might be, right? But in the end, I found a couple of options here, like the Anchor Solex stuff, or you know this one here that I actually bought from Blue Etty. None of them are sponsored in this video, but something in this sort of size, I think would be perfect for the example that I'm showing here, which is like a, a long weekend away, or working remotely, right? The Mac Mini itself, either the M4 Mini or the M4 Pro, there is a difference in the power for those, which I will talk a little bit when I talk about the display, but you're also gonna need a lightweight keyboard, like this one from Keychron. This is the Keychron K3 Max. Fun fact, this is the keyboard that Apple themselves used in their Mac Mini ads. You can see it here. And the centerpiece of this setup, which is the beautiful 17 Pro from Espresso Displays. They do have different models, by the way, in different sizes touch screen and non-touch screen. More about them in a moment. I'm also using an external SSD drive with this setup. Arguably the most important accessory for me the, for using the Mac mini and actually being productive with it. Now I've seen many people recommend this cheaper SSD drives and I've done an entire video about the best SSDs, which I need to update, but the point is still valid in there, which is 
You know, those cheaper SSD drives are great for backup usage and storing data that you're not gonna be accessing very often. But if you are a music producer or a video editor or a photographer that you actually need, you know, to download and upload and update files constantly working directly off of these drives, then I'd say the Acasis option Look, I'm not sponsored by them either, but I've been using them for at least three years, if not four now, and they continue to get better and better. These are just two of their examples here. I've got pretty much every single model of theirs. Most of the enclosures allow you to open them by hand, no need for tools, which again is great for, for remote work. And they now have a Thunderbolt 5 option too, which is this one that I'm showing you. And if you are using the M4 Pro, definitely worth checking that out for a longevity perspective and performance. The Thunderbolt 4 is really great as well. And when you pair their enclosure with any NVMe SSD, I can recommend Lexar, really good price. Seriously, this combo has basically run my channel for the last few years. As I always say, I do this, I use external storage because I refuse to like give Apple any more money for something that's becoming such a, a commodity right now. Uh, it's so affordable as well with so many options. Uh, the Lexar is one option, but there's also the Sabrent option here that I've been using as well. From a mouse perspective, any mouse will do, of course, but I love the Logitech Travel Mouse because, you know, how small it is, how light it is. It's absolutely perfect for this situation here where, where I'm working on the go, and it's an affordable option as well. Now, a business travel scenario, which is a more realistic scenario, you could say, right? But it's also one that I've pushed to the extreme here a little bit. Yes, you can use it on a train and use the train power like I'm demonstrating it here, but it was really just to see how extreme you can go here. Bit of a silly thing to do, but you know what? It kind of worked. It worked really well. No one really batted an eyelid, you know, just people probably just thought I was, I was just working, right? It was surprisingly quick to set this all up on the train as well. I had my power source. I tried this on two separate trains here in the UK with different size tables and probably different currents as well, but both worked. So just be careful with that because in some situations, the, the screen might need more power, more on that in a moment. And because the whole thing is so compact, not many people seem to care, right? just looked like I was working. Like I said, it just didn't look that weird because it's such a small little box that is kind of out of the way. And all you see is this nice monitor, which is smaller than some laptops, right? But where this setup really shines is in a hotel room or if you are in an executive room as well. Some situations where I might call for this, I was on holiday uh, in, in the summer and I needed to edit a video. It was only an hour or two of work and within a minute, I could have set this up and have a fully fledged desktop experience with me that is just as productive as being in my office or studio. In that situation, I was actually using my MacBook Pro, but it would have been nice to, to have a, an even smaller setup here with me. For creatives, business travelers, or anyone needing that extra power on the go, this setup can make a huge difference as well. And that's mainly because of the performance, right? If there are laptops, that do overheat, that require, you know, a lot of power. And depending on your laptop, even my MacBook Pro here, which is only three or four years old, is already being outperformed by the base model Mac Mini. So yeah, there's definitely a use case here. And talking about something that makes a huge difference, we have to talk about the Espresso Display 17 Pro, right? Such a great portable monitor, not just for the Mac Mini, but for anything really, your, your mobile, your tablet. I think this is a great business traveler monitor. It doesn't matter what computer you plug it into it. I see this being very popular in the corporate execs, for example, who want a home office set up whilst on the go. But I also see this as an additional monitor for smartphone users, right? I love using Samsung DeX, for example, with this. and. That's an even lighter setup than the Mac Mini, but this will be another video, spoiler alert, you might see an S25 Ultra feature in that setup. Some of you may be wondering how good this display is for creativity since you can get a pen, it's touch screen, right? And it's pretty much perfect for any artistic work. I found that the touch screen to be super useful with Mac OS in some scenarios. The pen is not here or there for me. I'd say espresso displays in general, are not really leaning into this aspect. It can do markups, it's gonna be extremely useful for things like whiteboard sessions. I definitely see myself using that in some situations. But if you're an artist, this is probably not gonna meet your expectation because you know the response time may not be as good as an iPad, for example. For the odd photo editing though, like minor retouches, you know, stuff that I'm showing you here today is actually great for that. Definitely check them out. There's a QR code here if you're watching this from a TV. And thank you so much Espresso Displays for sponsoring this part of the video. Okay, back to the Mac Mini here. There are a couple of considerations that 
One, of course, is gonna be power, like I said before. If you're traveling and you plan to use this in a hotel room, of course, it's a lot more comfortable. You've got all the power that you need in there. That's not gonna be an issue. But if you are disconnected from the power grid, then a portable battery is gonna be key. And I'd say choose one that has two outputs. And the reason for that is because, of course, you're gonna get USB ports on most of the options that you get here at this size, but there are some options in there with multiple plugs. And I'd say get two because you might wanna charge not just the Mac mini, but you might wanna have a power, a direct power to the monitor. And the reason for that is because if you're using the M4 Pro, it needs, the, it needs a little bit more power to power the monitor as well. Now, how else could you use the Mac mini on the go? A great example would be like a run and gun setup, right? It's more like it's a professional running around with your recording equipment, whether you're on a shoot perhaps, or a photographer doing a big event, maybe like a wedding event. This setup here could be your, like your on-site editing solution. Now I can see someone like a DP, maybe not a DP, but they'll, they'll probably have a lot of gear, but someone who wants to show their work straight away to their client. You know, having this in a little corner here with a, you know, a quick rendering of a clip just to show people, look what you just produced. Yes, there are plenty of solutions to allow you to see that and result in, in monitors and things like that, but you might not have your LUTs, you might not have your, your editing touches. In a filming location, being able to do a quick edit, I'd say that's pretty valuable, right? And I don't know, there might be times when you need a bit more power than your laptop. And a bigger screen with touch screen functionality to perhaps load a couple of clips into an editing solution like DaVinci Resolve and mess around with the, the color grading and things like that and show people, right, what you've just created. I think that's gonna be really powerful. If you enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other Mac Mini videos. I've done loads. There are some really popular videos in here where I've, I spent hours and hours, days actually, testing these devices. I've done performance tests, accessory guides, much more. Just yeah, have a look in there if that's something that you like. There's something there pretty much for everyone. Now in this next scenario here, it's a more, even more realistic one, which is a simple working from home setup. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there and let me know if you're one of them who would love to do a bit more work from home, but you can't today because you're either limited in your space or your, your laptop is a work computer that doesn't do a lot and you just wanna be more efficient from home and like I said, you might be limited in space or performance. This, you know, this tiny little thing here with the monitor is all the footprint you need. And it can be big if you connect it to a hub and the multiple monitors, but it can also be as small as what you're seeing here. And the best thing, it can disappear in seconds as well. I set this up for my wife at home and it's the perfect size for small desks like this. And I also have a similar setup here in the studio with the M4 Pro chip which I will be using for graphic design, LLM testing, video editing, and heavier tasks like that. For anyone working from home, this could be a way to boost your productivity, right? Without spending a lot of money or taking over your half of your house, right? It's a really compact setup, which I really love. Is the Mac mini a viable portable solution? Absolutely. With the right tools, you can go wherever you need it without adding too much weight to your bags. Almost as portable as a laptop, really. This setup, is possible, but it's gonna be for certain situations where a laptop just doesn't cut it. That's, let's face it as well, a lot of laptops these days never leave the desk anyway. And talking about mini PCs in general, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for this because in the next video, I will be comparing the Geekom GT1 Mega with the Mac Mini. The Geekom, spoiler alert, has a lot more connectivity. It comes with two terabytes of storage as default, I think. Um, it's got lots more memory options. You can open it yourself, but how does it compare with the M4 chip from Apple? That's the next video. Check out my other Mac mini videos here. I've got plenty of tips, stress tests, like I said, and different setups that you might enjoy. Oh, and remember, the LLM specific Mac mini video is also coming next. It's gonna be a deep dive into some really cool stuff there. So I hope to see you soon. Cheers.